After the repair work has been completed and the hole backfilled and compacted as required to two inches below the base of the pavement, you are ready to reinstate the core back into the roadway. Remove and stow the road plate. Then carefully clean the surfaces of the hole in the pavement and the core using a wire brush to ensure a good bond. Then using a damp cloth, wipe any loose debris from the core and the sides of the hole. Proper preparation is crucial to a proper reinstatement and a good bond. Take your time and do it right. Next, you need to dry fit the core to ensure that before pouring in the pea gravel, the core, when resting on the backfill, is two inches or so below the surface. If it is too high, remove some of the backfill. When you are satisfied with the depth, pour in a shallow layer, about an inch or so, of quarter inch pea gravel and spread it around at the bottom of the hole making sure that some of it undercuts the bottom of the pavement layer at the outer edge of the hole. This will help lock the core in place when the utilibon sets. The purpose of the pea gravel is to provide a solid bonding base and to compensate for irregularities, high and low spots, on the bottom of the core. Once you have spread the pea gravel, use the core to tamp it down, checking to see that the top edge of the core is a uniform distance down from the surface of the pavement, about half an inch all around and that the surface of the core is parallel to the surface of the road. Make sure when you're tamping it down that the registration marks on both the core and the pavement that you painted before coring are lined up so that the orientation of the core and the pavement is correct. At this stage, you may have to adjust the pea gravel at the bottom, remove some, add some more, or shift it around to accommodate for higher low spots. After each adjustment, you need to tamp it down with the core and make sure that the top of the core is parallel to the paved surface and about half an inch below the surface all around. This is an important step in dry fitting. When you are satisfied that the core is level and half an inch below the surface, you are ready to mix up the Utilibond. Utilibond comes in two colors, aged asphalt in a pail with a black lid that is used on asphalt surface roadways and natural concrete in a pail with a white lid that is used on concrete roads and sidewalks. Zip the strip on the lid, open the pail, and remove the bag of Utilibond. Then add water to the pail up to the bottom of the blue fill line. That is exactly two liters of water, which is the exact amount of water that needs to be added to one 20 kilogram or 44 pound bag of Utilibond. Bonding is a mechanical and chemical process, and bond strength and performance of Utilibond depend on the exact water to Utilibond ratio. Do not overfill past the bottom of the line. Next, tear open or cut the top of the bag. Like any cementitious powder, it is best not to inhale Utilibond or bring it in contact with your bare skin. So wear gloves and either put on an appropriate mask or determine which way the wind is blowing and carefully pour the entire bag into the pail while mixing it with the drill-powered mixing paddle. Keep mixing for about three minutes until the Utilibond achieves a smooth and creamy consistency. At first, it will seem lumpy and dry, and you'll be tempted to add more water. Don't. Just keep mixing, and as the super plasticizing agent kicks in, the Utilibond will smooth out. At about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the whole mixing process should take about three minutes, and at higher temperatures, a little bit less. Make sure that you work the mixing blade up and down, and allow it to pick up all of the dry material at the bottom of the pail and around the edges. After you've done mixing, Rinse off the mixing blade in a pail of clean water. Next, from a height just above the road surface, carefully pour the Utilibond into the hole so as not to disturb the pea gravel at the bottom of the hole. A full pail of Utilibond will reinstate a large 16 inch or 17 inch deep core. An eight or nine inch core will take about half a pail. It is always better to put too much Utilibond in the hole than too little, as the excess will simply rise up to the surface through the kerf around the core when the core is put back in. This excess can be easily scraped up and disposed of. If you don't have enough Utilibond in the hole, it's a much more complicated process to pull out the core and add more Utilibond. After a couple of cores, you will be able to gauge the correct amount for each sized core. In this case, the core is about six inches deep, so we pour in about half of the Utilibond. Next, carefully lower the core into the hole, making sure that the registration mark on the core lines up with the one on the road. Gently rock the core back and forth and tap it gently down until you see the excess Utilibond come up evenly around the complete circumference of the core. This is a very important step. 
In order to achieve a strong and watertight bond, the utilibon must completely fill the kerf, or annular space, between the core and the inside surface of the hole, and fully surround the core. But don't press down too hard, as you do not want to push the core below the surface of the road. Just take your time. Easy does it. Once you see that the circumference of the core is completely surrounded by utilibond and the excess is beginning to ooze up all around the core and out onto the surface of the road, you can remove the core puller. This will allow the excess utilibond at the bottom of the hole to rise up through the center pilot hole, completely filling the pilot hole. See how it slowly comes up to the surface? The core is now completely surrounded by utilibond on the bottom, around the sides, and up through the pilot hole. Now comes the most important step in reinstatement, the leveling of the core with the surface of the road. The top surface of the core should now be about a half inch or so above the surface of the roadway. Gently and evenly press the core into the hole with your foot or your hands. The idea is to get it even all around with the surface of the road. You can scoop up the excess utilibond with the trowel. Clean up around the core as you go while the utilibond is still wet. It will make the final cleanup easier later on. You can use the straight edge of the trowel to make sure that the core is flush with the edge of the pavement. You may have to gently tap it with a pry bar to get it level. Repeat the process until all edges are flush, clearing the excess utilibond as you go. Rinse off your tools in water and you're almost finished. While you are waiting for the utilibond to set and gain strength, keep the area around the kerf and pilot hole wet using a brush dipped in water. Gently smooth the surface out. This will ensure an almost invisible reinstatement when the utilibond dries. You can also use the brush and the water to clean up around the site. A pointing trowel can be used to help smooth out the surface of the kerf and fill in any depressions. Sometimes, and especially if you are on a slight incline, gravity will cause the utilibond to migrate to the lower side of the kerf or pilot hole. You can fix this by simply adding a little utilibond to the high side to fill it in and smooth it out. The object of this part of the reinstatement is to make sure that the reinstated core is even with the rest of the roadway and blends in. It may appear to be fussy or cosmetic work, but it needs to be done before the utilibond completely sets up. A little more effort at this stage will make a big difference at the end. We know that in terms of the actual reinstatement, the important matter is that utilibond, as it sets up, is rapidly gaining more than 50,000 pounds of bond strength below the surface. But we also know that city inspectors cannot see that happening and use the appearance at the surface to judge the effectiveness of the reinstatement process. So appearance and what the reinstatement looks like is very important in getting municipal approval for the process. After 10 or 15 minutes, you can begin to hose down the site using the pressure washer, being careful to avoid direct pressure on the kerf and pilot hole until the utilibond is set. See how the operator carefully moves around the kerf outside and inside and avoids direct pressure on the utilibond in the kerf and pilot hole. Once the utilibond has set and is firm to the touch on the surface, approximately 20 minutes or so at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, a more robust washdown is possible. And you are done. 30 minutes after you began the reinstatement, a core reinstated with utilibond is capable of supporting a single tire load of more than 52,000 pounds. That's five times the Ashto standard and equivalent to the combined weight of five transit buses, one on top of the other. Your job here is done. You can now safely reopen the road to traffic and move on to the next work site.